Hello Year 6 and welcome to Lesson 3 of your Rainforest work. We are looking at the understory today. So we're going to get started with some videos and you're going to be taking some notes as usual. We've got lots of different video clips to watch this morning and you're going to need a pen and a notebook ready to make notes on a new piece of paper as this is a new section of the Rainforest. Called the understory. The understory also receives little light. Shrubs, bushes and younger trees occupy this layer, many growing in small patches of light. Many climbing plants grow in the understory. Camouflage is particularly important for animals that live in this layer. Many animals that live in the understory rely on the humid and damp conditions to survive. Forest understory layer. The rainforest understory layer is above the forest floor and below the forest canopy. It is the most colorful part of the rainforest sandwich. In this layer, there are many strange and wondrous tropical plants and flowers. Flowers such as the orchid, can be found in the understory layer, where the climate is warm and damp, a perfect place for plants and animals to thrive. These flowers and plants contribute to the important process of pollination and seed dispersion. Pollination is the reason why the rainforest keeps growing and developing. Without the process of pollination, all plants and animals would die. The brightly colored flowers that hang in the rainforest underlay attract many birds, bats, insects, and animals. They spread the pollen by carrying the pollen from flower to flower. The pollen transfers from the male to the female parts of the plants and flowers. This starts the process of germination. Birds and animals also help to disperse seeds throughout the rainforest. They eat the fruit and seeds that grow on the plants and trees. The seeds then get carried away on their fur or in their waste. The seeds eventually fall to the ground and grow into new plants and trees. The rainforest underlayer is usually humid and damp. You can find lizards, snakes, insects, bats. The humidity in the understory layer helps to keep lots of animals and plants hydrated in the tropical heat. In this layer, there are hidden caves and hollow trees that make the perfect dens or hiding places for bats or large cats and bears. The shrub layer is between 0 and 10 meters. It's made up of smaller plants, including orchids. It grows thickly near openings in the forests, rivers, and small clearings. Depending on the particular forest, you can find alligators, jaguars, snakes, and insects, such as ants and tarantulas living here. The next layer up is mainly populated with shrubs and young saplings. This part of the forest is usually quite dark because it lies in the shadow of the trees above. But every so often a tree comes crashing down, opening up a gap above. Light comes streaming in to stimulate growth. And that's not all that happens. The growth spurt is the beginning of a huge fight between different plants to see which one can make best use of the conditions. The competition for growth is so fierce that only one seed in 10 million will produce a tree that reaches the canopy. And the battle is being fought out by an incredible number of combatants. Walking through the rainforest, it's actually quite difficult to find two trees the same. There's an incredible diversity of plant and animal species, which is why the rainforest is so special. In fact, scientists have calculated we know more about the surface of the moon than we do the species of the rainforest. Delicate palms compete with thick, heavy vines for space. And some plants start life by growing on top of others. These are epiphytes, or air plants, which start life in the boughs of trees. To begin with, they don't need roots because they take in water and nutrients straight off their hosts. As they get bigger, they frequently extend roots to the ground to supplement their nutrient intake. 
As if having to share their supplies with an epiphyte wasn't bad enough, some trees may find themselves in the clutches of a killer. This is a matapalo, or strangler fig. As it grows, it slowly wraps itself around its host tree, gradually cutting the trunk off from light and water. In the middle of all this is a laurel tree, which has all but disappeared in the clutches of the fig tree that's growing on it. It won't be long before the fig surrounds the laurel completely and kills it. Eventually, only the fig will remain. Several tree types have developed ways of defending themselves against the attention of epiphytes. This one has a very smooth bark, which makes it very difficult for epiphytes to get a grip. Okay, so this layer covers the understory and really the under canopy, which is both the levels that sit between the forest floor and the canopy itself. So the understory, hopefully you've got plenty of notes. I'm going to go through mine and you can add to yours if you didn't manage to get everything. So hopefully you understood that the light is still really scarce. That means there's not very much down there in the understory. It's still pretty dark. Um, and the competition for nourishment and growth is really fierce, which means that all the plants are trying to fight for the light. When those trees fall down, they are trying to get to that sunlight so that they can grow the quickest and ultimately get up to the canopy. Um, they talked about the huge diversity of plant life, which was typically found here, mostly shrubs, young saplings, which are baby trees. Um, and these are fast growing because they need to reach the sunlight. Notice how that word has been hyphenated because um, it's joined together to make an adjective. You've got many plants, um, particularly epiphytes there, have evolved ways of reaching this layer. Um, for example, and then you had the Matapala fig, which was an example of a plant that grows on top of another plant and actually eventually kills it. So if you remember that from the video, you might want to rewind if you wanted to get more notes on that. Some plants, however, have evolved smooth bark, which protects them from these epiphytes and prevents them from hanging on. Now, this wasn't in one of the videos, but this is just a fact that um, I've added in because it's important that you know, is that lots of the plants at this lower level have really broad, huge leaves, great big um, fern leaves. And quite often they have red sort of purple undersides to them, which retain as much of the sun's rays as possible. So um, a slight difference to when they get up to the canopy where they're bright green. Um, and just something I thought you might like to include. And the other thing that the leaves have further down in the rainforest is drip tips. And that's because there's so much rain all the time. In fact, most of the leaves in the rainforest have these. And they have a funnel-like pointed ends that lets the water drop off. And then that doesn't weigh the leaves down. So just a little fact there that I threw in on the end. I had more information here, um, more about the uh, fruit life and the animals there. So... There are fruits in this layer and lots of brightly coloured flowers. Um, for example, there was orchids. Um, it said they were plentiful, so plenty of them. And they rely on the pollinators, the insects, to help fertilise these. To um, there were also large caves. Oops, I seem to have moved two boxes there. Large caves, which were perfect habitats for a diversity of animals, which live in the layer two. So you saw the underground sort of cavernous areas under the roots of the trees and so perfect for big cats but also lots of spiders, snakes, lizards and they mentioned the importance of being able to camouflage in this layer um, else you might get eaten. So lots of notes there, hopefully you had plenty as well, maybe you've got a few more than me but you should be now ready to write about the understory. So before we start our writing today our sentence level work is all about the use of the passive voice. In class, in SPAG lessons, in the autumn term, we talked about the active and the passive, and I've got some examples here of what we're doing when we're turning writing into the passive voice, because this type of writing is perfect opportunity to have a go at experimenting with it. So the passive voice is where we put the subject at the end of the sentence. So instead of saying the insects and the fungi break down the organic litter, we are saying the dead organic litter is broken down by the insects and the fungi. So this makes it passive because the insects and the fungi are doing the action, but we put them at the end of the sentence. The dead organic litter is doing absolutely nothing at all, and that's what makes it passive in this sentence. So that's an example that you might want to use. Here's another one. Decaying matter lies on the forest floor whilst being eaten by insects and fungi. I don't really like being eaten because actually... It's being decomposed. Let's change that word and up-level it. 
being decomposed by insects and fungi. So you can have a go if you want to, have a go at moving one of your sentences, modifying it, moving it around to see if you can have a play with that. I've got a couple more which are relating to this section of writing. Um, so this is all about the epiphytes. So again, here's an example of the active. The subject is doing the action. So this is epiphytes take nutrients from the host tree. This is the way we often write and we most normally write. But we could turn this round and use the passive voice and say the host tree's nutrients are taken by the epiphytes. And there we have the subject having the action done to it. So something in your writing today I want you to have a go at doing. I'm going to have a go at doing it in one of the sentences in this modelled right here. So we can perhaps have a go together and you can see what I'm going to do. Above the forest floor is the understory. Due to the fact that the light is scarce, the leaves of the plants found in this layer are very broad and have red-purple undersides to retain as much of the sun's rays as possible. Furthermore, many plants have evolved drip tips. These have funnel-like pointed ends that let water drop off so that it does not weigh the leaves down. The competition for nourishment and growth is fierce in the shadows of the vegetation above. Many plants, particularly epiphytes, have evolved ways of reaching this layer. For example, the matapala, more commonly known as the strangler fig, wraps itself around the host tree, absorbing all of its nutrients and eventually killing it. In addition to this, there is a huge diversity of plant life typically found here, mostly shrubs and young saplings. I'm going to edit one of the sentences in here to try and turn it into the passive voice so that I can show you how I'm going to do it in my own writing. I'm going to use this one here. For example, the matapala, more commonly known as the strangler fig, wraps itself around the host tree. I put in a comma here, which enables all the nutrients to be absorbed by this killer vine. Let's just check that makes sense wraps itself around the host tree which enables all the nutrients to be absorbed by so there's my passive voice by this killer vine yeah that works so i've edited to pop in the passive voice see if you can do it in your own writing so i've popped another model on here which is a little bit longer than the first one we've just had a look at i've put the add spice list down the side here to remind you of different ways to start your sentences and i know you used to use this acronym in year five a being for adverb openers, D for dropping clause or dialogue, not going to be appropriate in this writing. You've got S for simile, P for prepositions, you should have plenty of those. I for ing verbs like living and growing. C for conjunctions and E for ed verbs, so like um, horrified or um, usually a feeling. So probably, again, not appropriate for this writing, but you can probably have a look through this piece and see how I've used quite a range just to keep the sentences diverse and the sentence structures varied and you've got a range of clause structures throughout the whole thing. You'll also notice there's two sentences at the top and the bottom of this paragraph and they're my orientation and my concluding sentences. My orientation sentence must go at the beginning of each paragraph and we talked about that in the last section that we wrote yesterday. So we've got above the forest floor is the second layer of the rainforest, the understory. Then we've got our main passage of writing and at the bottom here we've got our link sentence. If a tree can survive in this layer they may ultimately reach their goal of the canopy. So that's your link to the following section. So remember we're trying to make links between our sections of writing so that our reader can read on and it all flows together really nicely. You've got lots of punctuation used in here which I'd like you to take a look at. I'm not going to read this one through with you and you can have a read of that and see what you might magpie Plenty of language um, highlighted for you. The blue is the um, technical language. You've got red for your openers. You've got lots of conjunctions in this writing. So they are your purple um, words and they match up with your ad spice openers as well. You've got some as openers because conjunctions work to link sentences together. But you've got also plenty used within sentences as well because you're linking ideas together within a sentence. So lots of things there for you to have a look at and hopefully magpie, like I say, and then use in your own writing. Now I've popped this page in just as I always do to give you some sentence openers to get you started so that you're not struggling to with a blank page, not knowing where to begin. Really good idea to start with a prepositional opener because you're talking about the next layer 
and we're talking about where that is so good way to start one of these sentence openers to get you going lots of sentence um, ideas here for linking ideas you glue your conjunctions have a look at those and you might want to use those as well there's an example here before you finish your paragraph just to remind you you've got to make that link to the next layer up and the next layer up is the canopy so there's three modeled sentences there that you can magpie trees and plants that have managed to survive to reach the understory are likely to reach the canopy could be one you use or a conditional sentence if a tree can survive this layer comma they may ultimately reach their goal of the canopy or you might magpie this one having survived the understory it is likely that these trees will reach the ultimate layer colon the canopy so make sure you magpie one of these or come up with your own sentence before you finish off this paragraph and then your last task today is to self-assess. Now I've made this a little bit more detailed because you've done a bit more writing now. Have you got your orientation and concluding sentence? Have you used the passive voice? If you haven't, can you edit to do so? Have you used plenty of technical language? For example, epiphytes and other words that we've talked about all the way through. Prepositional phrases to open sentences. Are you still using plenty of those? And you might now be using words like between, or within because we're in the sandwich part of the layer I think one of the videos said so we're sandwiched between other layers have you used explanation conjunctions to develop your ideas and add your detail so it doesn't just sound like a list of facts like therefore and as a result as examples and have you used a full range of punctuation go back to that model right to have a look and see how you can include plenty of punctuation in your writing today so I look forward to reading those good luck